our DNO. We love talking football. We love talking recruiting. We also love talking food. We got some, a pot of chili in here at 6.30 or 6.40 in the morning, man. You want to take advantage of some of this? <laughs> Yeah, I, I could, I could, uh, I could do some damage on some chili. I love chili, especially, especially uh, you know December, January, and February, the coldest yeah. months of the year. It's it's pretty, 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 uh, pretty nice. Oh. Our buddy Stan brings one or two by a year. Stan the man. And he, he puts just the right amount of jalapenos in there, and uh, yeah, I think you could do some damage on this. No, oh, love, uh, I love uh, spice. I yeah. Throw throw. Throw as many jalapenos in there as you want. There you go. There you go. Hey, thanks for being here early. Sam Pittman's coming up at eight in your normal slot. So thanks for uh, for some flexibility this morning uh, on on this Thursday. So, hey, no problem. No, uh, just glad to just glad you guys still want me on, man. <laughs> Richard, we opened up the program talking about the Arkansas football team and the success they've had in recruiting despite the two and ten records. Chad Morris brought in a top 25 recruiting class in his second go around Sam Pittman in his first go around top brought in a top 30 recruiting class they now sit at 23 on the 24 7 sports composite for this upcoming recruiting class how much is winning at Arkansas going to help their recruiting despite them being pretty successful the last couple of years Anytime you start winning and it, 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 it makes those calls, say on a Saturday, you start reaching out to kids pretty much immediately after the game. Say, hey, did you watch the game? And, and most of the time, uh, you know, kids, if they're being recruited by a particular school, do watch uh, games that uh, they're, uh, the, the schools that they're being recruited by are, are participating in. Uh, the kids, you know, they, 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 they'll, they'll more be apt to – to take your call uh, and respond to you when you when you're winning uh, like Arkansas uh, compared to what they've been in the past, and it, you know there could be some guys that been have been on the fence uh, previously with uh, with uh, with you, and and when you uh, win on on the national level and you get all the pub that uh, Arkansas has gotten, especially over the last few days after the Ole Miss game, uh, you know kids. Uh, Kids may say, "Well, maybe I need to take a uh, you know a closer look at, at these guys." And and the, again, the, uh, the the communication is usually uh, so much better after a win because kids are excited about mm-hmm. talking to winning uh, programs. Now, a lot of guys within the state will choose Arkansas despite whatever their record is. For some kids out of state, though, they want to go to a program that looks like it's going forward. It's moving upward. And I know these last couple of recruiting classes, you had guys committed that decommitted because, Richard, let's be honest, they were probably getting made fun of at school. It's like, oh, you're going to the school that let a fake punt return for a touchdown or you're going to a school that is 2-10 and 10 right now and they were probably getting laughed at and made fun of. That's not happening this year. Is Does that play into the role at all when a kid's committed that might not decommit because of where the program is solidified right now? Oh, there's no doubt about that. And that's always crossed my mind, too. When, you, when you're losing as bad as Arkansas was for the previous two years, and you, you, do, do you want to wear an Arkansas shirt at the school and your friends kind of dog you yeah. uh, during the day? I mean, that, and, hey, that, that's tough to take uh, when you're a 17, 18-year-old young man uh, and, and your friends are going, man, you're seriously, you're going to go there? Look, look, look at this dumpster fire. But uh, when when you're winning, hey, you can wear that shirt. You can wear that cap, and uh, and you're getting high fives in the in the uh, hallway, and uh, you're hearing positive things, and, and, and it, it, it you know it just makes you feel good about your choice. So uh, I think uh, definitely winning uh, obviously helps, and and it helps uh, not only right now in the 21 class, and, but the 22 and 23 classes. Those guys they're excited about talking about. Uh, Razorback football when when you know you're winning like this, you know Richard. As we look back at Chad Morris's couple of classes, you know it's becoming evident that they couldn't coach worth a lick on the field, but they as a staff, but they could sure bring in a few recruits. And you look at you know players like Catalan and some people that are contributing as freshmen or redshirt freshmen right now, and it, it's pretty evident in some of these younger players that uh, some of the talent from Texas is really showing up uh, right now. Um, you know, people are recognizing some of the some of that talent is going to help build this program that Morris did bring in. But you're you're still a head scratcher. 
how they couldn't win more than two games a year with what they had. Yeah, it, 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 we, we were saying the last previous year, uh, well, last two years, I, I, I wasn't necessarily saying it uh, as bad maybe as, uh, as I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I, I, I did say that, uh, especially last year, I said the talent was a two and 10 talent. Uh, there was just no way it was as bad as, uh, uh, they were playing. And, but, uh, you, you, uh, you have to give, uh, you have to give them credit for being able to, uh, to, to recruit despite, the uh, the adversity that, that they had and talking about Chad Morris and, and his staff. And they did, uh, it did evaluate well and all that, but it uh, obviously didn't translate very well uh, on the football field, and, and a lot goes into that. Obviously, coaching ability, communication with the the players, buying in, and and I think they they initially bought in a little bit, but uh, after uh, after you know several losses and uh, and maybe probably lack of leadership, uh, obviously they they kind of lost them. I don't think I asked you this last week, but I've been meaning to. If I did, I apologize about re-recruiting some seniors. I, that's one thing I want to talk with Sam about when he's with us in the third hour of the show is, um, you know, re-recruiting some of the players that will have that extra year of eligibility. I don't know how the scholarship situation is going to work out, and I don't, maybe all that hasn't been determined yet. But uh, that's going to be an interesting thing for for all of us to follow, Richard, is who, who amongst the this current group of players, particularly that – you know, are going in thinking this is their final year. Is this staff going to, you know, put the the sales pitch on to, hey, you know, why don't you come back and and play another year because uh, the rules have changed? Yeah, and I I think that's uh, obviously something that uh, that uh, the coaching staff will uh, obviously uh, you know work on it. But at the same time, you know, the kids are going to have to evaluate them themselves. Do are, are they some some kids may be ready to just uh, get their degree and start start their life, uh, you know, in the private sector. And then there's other guys that are, that are, you know, obviously wanting to go to the next level. What kind of feedback are they getting for, you know, the NFL if they come out now or versus maybe if they stay another year and develop and, and have a good season, does that obviously help their pro- prospects uh, the following year? So I think there's a lot going into that. And there, there may be some guys that, uh, Get, have their degree and are wanting to maybe work on their masters and and uh, stay another year and play football. I mean, it, and there, there's some guys that just don't do well not playing football. And if the prospect of them uh, not going to the NFL is that high, but they their love for the game is so 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 big, so much, uh, I could see several just uh, wanting to continue to. To play because I, I talked to guys that uh, aren't, aren't playing right now, or talked to parents that you know their kids aren't playing right now after uh, the last couple of years, and, and their, their kids are having kind of a tough time not uh, being able to play the sports that they grew up loving. Talking with Richard Davenport here on the Morning Rush, Richard. This question comes from Jeremiah in Fort Smith. He says he wants to know your opinion on the recruiting style differences between Chad and Sam. You know, they're, I would say they're much the same, uh, you know, at least uh, from the standpoint they're very aggressive in the extending offers. And you, you see they're still, uh, they extended, uh, they've been extending offers this week. Uh, they're focusing uh, obviously more on the 22, 23, and even their uh, extended offers in the 24 class. you got to get those relationships going early. Uh, I think there's very, uh, there's, there's a lot of similarities there. Uh and, you know, each each coach staff has their own personality and uh, personalities versus uh, the other staff. Different different people, different uh, ways of recruiting. Uh, I, I just tend to think that uh, you know maybe coach uh, coach Pittman and his staff they're more blue collar, uh, hardworking. Uh, you know, no no thrills type uh, coaching staff. Where the previous staff uh, they did some things that maybe probably. Uh, didn't help uh, them with the the current player the, the players that were on on campus because they focused so much on uh, on recruiting and built the built up uh, those classes and were saying that that they were the future of the program and when you got guys that are on the team putting uh, forth all the effort and all your it seems like to them whether it's true or not that you're focused 
on bringing in these uh, other recruits and and they're they're going to turn around the program. Uh, yeah. Kind of, I think that rubbed uh, some of the guys the wrong way that were on the team yeah. the last couple of years. I just think if they weren't living under a dead period the whole time, so, where they could actually get out and see people. <laughs> yeah, very, it's very difficult. Obviously, that 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 is the that is the difference. But uh, uh, it's, that's 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 where you you. You know, everybody's under the same dead period, sure. so it's, it's, it's an equal playing field, but it's it's not the easiest way to recruit. There's no doubt about that. Richard, thanks for joining us early. Richard Davenport of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the recruiting guru, not only on this program, but all across the state. R.D., appreciate the time as always, buddy. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one. R.D., you're the best. Appreciate you getting up a little earlier for us this morning.